where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has hidden unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Let's dig in. Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. Genesis 20, 9 and 10 says, Then Abimelech called Abraham and said to him, What have you done to us? And how have I sinned against you, that you have brought on me and my kingdom a great sin? You have done to me things that ought not be done. And Abimelech said to Abraham, What did you see that you did such a thing? After I read that, I was quite shocked to see a heathen king bawling out God's man, chosen to become the patriarch of a great nation, to be the forerunner of the Messiah, to be the one who would be called friend of God. But I totally agreed that Abraham deserved it. He'd been caught in a lie, a lie born out of fear. He'd claimed that his wife Sarah was his sister instead of his wife. A king of Gerar, Abimelech, took her as his wife. If it hadn't been for God's warning in a dream, Abimelech and Abraham both would have been in big trouble, not to mention Sarah. The crazy thing is, this wasn't the first time Abraham had been caught in this lie. He'd done the same thing in Egypt, early on in his journey. Apparently he did this other times too, because he told Abimelech in verse 13, And my God caused me to wonder for my father's house, and I said to her, This is the kindness you must do me. At every place to which we come, say of me, he is my brother. Abraham hadn't trusted God completely, not with his wife or his own life. And being caught in this, advertised to Abimelech and the whole area, that Abraham didn't trust his God to take care of him. He had done this out of fear. If we can trust God and have integrity even when it doesn't seem safe or convenient, We will be a living testimony to others of God's goodness. But if we are a nervous wreck before a serious doctor's appointment, or we're afraid of something that probably won't ever happen, or if we, you know, bend the rules for our own convenience, or if we're negligent in our responsibilities because we're just being lazy, we're not really trusting God. Oh, and in case you wondered, I'm guilty of every single one of those things at one time or another. And I'm sure if you were honest, you'd say you were too. And we get away with it most of the time. But if we get caught, well, we're really bad examples to others, and we're not being good representatives of the Lord. When the world sees our cross necklace, when they catch us in a little white lie, or when we whiz past a non-Christian driving 10 miles over the speed limit and they read our Christian bumper sticker, or when we obsess over a fear that we have to an unbelieving coworker, well, we're just making God look bad. We're making God's people in general look like hypocrites. We're making it plain to the world that either we don't believe what we say we believe, or we just don't trust God. And sometimes we deserve, as Abraham did, a rebuke from the non-Christian world. As Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians 5.20, we are ambassadors for Christ. Paul also urged us in Ephesians 4.1, to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. How's your walk? How are you doing as a representative of Him? You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com and check out our new website. You can find the address in the description below. I'm Carla Early, and thanks for listening. And remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also.